for joining us again today. I'm here with a man who needs no introduction for myself, uh, Peter Martin. Peter, thanks Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure, evening. pleasure. Peter, tell us how long are you in the boat? From about seven years of age and I'm 53, so you work it out about 40, 44, 45 years. Over 40 years. Uh, I suppose you started off like everybody else, tipplers and... Started off, uh, one brother kept tipplers and one brother kept homers and then the guy, the, the oldest fella Tony, God the rest of his dead now, but he had uh, the racing pigeons and he bought out a guy called Hubert Bates, who used to live in Riverdale. Right. And I tell you all the trouble, they were a Protestant family and they were moving out and Tony bought all his pigeons and he was a good distance man. And after a couple of years, he lost interest and just said to me, do what you want them. So I took over from the end. And a lot of years later, when I was about 16, moved down south. Kept them down there just for fun. There was no clubs or nothing. There was me and an old guy, Joe Cassidy, with the only two people in, practically in Donegal that had pigeons. And we became great mates. And then I ended up in very friendly with all his brothers up in Derry and his cousins. And they had got the old, most of the Derry fanciers. And still mates with a lot of Leo Flanagan and boys like that, Paddy Healy, or just all the local Derry boys up there, yeah. the Crowdies and all the rest of it, but the Cassidy's, the McElhenney's, God, there's a name out of them. Kept in touch with them for years and used to go up showing pigeons when I lived in Donegal because that was the only out that we had. To, right. You know, there was no racing, so we went showing and kept in contact with pigeon people. So. And then years later, you came back to Belfast. Years later, me and the wife and kids moved back up here and I raced out of Riverdale pretty successfully for a lot of years and then eventually I think in 1996 I think it was I moved here. I, I can remember back my grandson Jack is eight now about six years ago I had him down with Bully Clinton Bully brought him out to the birds and the first grandson I was Billy watch nothing happens to him because if anything happens I had to go home and face his nanny. Of course. And um, he loved the pigeons. Mm. But he says to me, I'm going to be love built and get fan tails. And that's what we've we done. And then there's more grandchildren came along. Jack and the Dean decided about three years ago that they wanted to start racing at Pigeons. Mm. And at that time, I'd never heard of Peter Martin. But different people there I had started talking to about racing Pigeons. And all I heard was Peter Martin, Peter Martin, Peter Martin. And I thought to myself, if your name's not Peter Martin, you can't race a pigeon. Mm. So, there had to be a lot of big wins or something for, for people that, to give you this sort of recognition. Well, I think it's like most people that have a, a particular lane of pigeons. I mean, I, I, in 89, I joined the Fort Feet. It was the only pigeon club I've ever been in. But it took a few years to get up off my feet and with the help of guys like Paddy Tab who were winning and Paul McCarthy, the three of us were very, very poly for years. We used to have a cup of tea in Paul's house every Monday night and right. do a post-mortem on the race and of course Big McCarthy would be telling us where we all went wrong and all the rest of it and it used to be good crack. Good crack. Good crack. Good crack. people were picking up their Yes, they called it the three peas club because right. we all had our mug, Peter, <laughs> Paul and Pat. But we had more fun up there on a Monday night in that man's house and it went on for years but Pat started knocking the doors down and then I was always a runner up to him and then eventually I started getting my act together and I had a load of second fades when I lived in Riverdale but I never had a first fade and I remember when I moved here Big Paul says it was the worst move I ever made moving up here I would never win the fade Oh it's just some spot here And I remember that year, the first year's racing Paul McCarthy was first fade out of Arkle when I was second fade and I thought, Jesus, here we go again, there's another second, I'm going to keep hitting the goalpost. And the following week, I was first and second fed and Paul was third. So it proved that it could be done up here. And, and what, was it a particular family of birds? That, that I was going very, very well with the butchered pigeons, um, the old red rum pigeons mainly, from Tommy, my brother, and Harry Clinton. Yes. Harry and I were great friends and he packed them in and just... He, he pulled the wood over my eyes, he asked me to take his stock <laughs> pigeons up here well. so he could build a new loft. Yeah. And he, when I got all the pigeons up here, they were here about a week and he phoned up and he says, they're all yours. He, he, he got into the fish and then he into the fish. He got into the fish and then he ditched the pigeons and thank God that he did because they were the greatest pigeons. And still to this day among the greatest pigeons I have. The thirty of the best boys that's ever come about this house were from Tom and, and Harry Clinton, the old red rum pigeons. Eventually I introduced um, a lane into them from an old guy called Tommy Marston who had to have 
a lot of bypasses done and they bought dodgy ticker. Mm-hmm. And I bought one, two pigeons from them. One of them only filled for a year, the other one was a young bird. And it's nest made it on the fed. And we're going back to 95 now. Mm-hmm. And this was a young bird. And I paid £750 for this young cock. And if the wife would have paid it, I the house. It was back then, it was, I tell you, it was a, a good few weeks' wages. But from the day and hour that blackjack pigeon came, he just threw winners out. And he had a habit of throwing two of the same sex in the night. It could be two cocks or two hens. Yes. But when he done that, I always look forward to it because both of them would win or both of them would breed. I remember he had two daughters, 18 and 19. Both of them win, but they were hens and I only raised hens as young birds. Okay. I gave one of the hens to him and Ray and it produced him that good pigeon blue Petra, four weeks running in the first hundred of the nippy. And I still have that lane here today. That lane is responsible for Morris Wilkinson pigeon. The you, you, one of, you still have the, the lane of the red pigeons? The lane of the blackjacks and the lane of the, well my red rum pigeons in all honesty carry very few red. We're mostly darks and checks right. and blues. So, um, uh, we, we were around the pens earlier on and you were showing me your butcher hands and your butcher cats. So yeah. the, the butcher lanes are still very much the butcher lanes I don't think I could ever part with, even if they weren't winning, because they're my own family and so much work went into them, and they were very, very successful, and still are, it's just that, I don't know if you're aware of, you know me now, about eight years of odd, yeah, yeah. health trouble with cancer, yeah. cancer twice, and thank God, uh, you know, so far I beat it and I'm still here, but it takes a lot of idea and takes a long time to get back, yes. and when I was going through all the treatment and all the rest, I couldn't raise pigeons properly. And like a fool, I got into more breeding and breeding. I fell in love with breeding, and I just I, I, actually I get more out of breeding than I do out of racing pigeons. It's, it's the same saying that it's you said you, you, you get more into breeding, even though you're maybe not winning, your birds are still winning. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, one of the downsides of me not winning here for the last lot of years or winning regular the way I used to is. Like I said, you have a couple Ill of health. Health. too many pigeons and ill health. The ill health would, would have took care of maybe six, seven, eight years of, of me not yes. being there. I mean, when I finished the first year when I was diagnosed with cancer, I finished that year as raised winner. Mm-hmm. But then I had a lot of years of heavy duty chemo and all after that. But as I say, water under the bridge, it's all hopefully behind me now. I'm back at the pigeons. I need to get my numbers down. I like every other pigeon, on have far too many pigeons. Yes. Yes. But when you've been in the breeding game, and you get the opportunity to get a family of pigeons that have been winning for 30, 40, hard 50 years down. out, right? You're not going to turn them down, especially if you're in love with breeding like I am. Yeah. I ended up, I thought I was getting about 20 stock pair from Ray Brothers. I ended up with 80 pair. <laughs> and you can't turn down pigeons that have three and four and five first, or that are bred three and four and five fed winners. So you're not going to turn them down. So it was overloaded here for maybe three years with pigeons, and it's only this year I've actually started. Moving them on, getting the old boys moving them on. I, I hate killing them. I hate, I hate killing the pigeon that has bred some. I've sent a lot of real good pigeons up to Derry. I've started a few boys off. One local lot here got 10 pair of pigeons, and I can honestly tell you if he went out to buy them, £5,000 would have looked But they're good pigeons going to waste, so somebody may as well get a crack at them. I got more fun out of the phone ringing and saying, I'll get in with such a pigeon or I'll get in with this pigeon. I hate people who won't give you yeah. acknowledgement. Well, that, that, that's not right. I think that's only common decency that they're doing well. Well, I have a habit, and any of the boys that know me will tell you anybody starting up, I just automatically get a pair of rings yeah. and, and put a pair of rings our young ones out for them. We, when we were starting to raise people, Harry Clinton, I mean, Harry's a personal friend of mine too, uh, as is Billy and Terry and Martin. But Billy says to me, I'd see Martin, I'd see Peter Martin, and I'd get you a couple of pair of Peter Martin. And this was the time when I was thinking nobody can fly a pigeon on it. It's not Peter Martin. I, I didn't know who you were. But you still have a very, very good name. You still have a very good name for breeding. I would like um, to think so because I, I do genuinely believe I put out quality pigeons. You do? I wouldn't tell any lies about it. And anything that isn't good enough for this garden goes in the bin. And anybody that's coming to buy pigeons, rather than me get a bad name. I would give them what I would keep for myself. Well, I mean, I, I would be good friends with Cameron Bigger, David Cameron Q. Bigger. And I remember David was getting out of some parts and I said, I don't do that, David, I'll take him. 
I turn and he says, they're not good enough for us, they're not good enough for you. He's right, because anybody starting off, you know, especially a young lad, they're easy led and, and everybody's going to offer you pigeons. You know, there's a pair of young ones there. Yes. But you need to be working from, from day one, you need to be working and have it worked out in your head what you're doing. If you're going to sprint, you're going to middle or whatever, whatever way you're going to race and whatever team you're going to get. Get a team of pigeons that are winning and get all the young ones you can from that man if he's winning. That's the way I look at it. Well, Let's talk a wee bit about the teams you have out here, and you have a terrific setup, and we'll, we'll bring the video camera out there later on. But you show me your Bruiser hands, your Bruiser cats. Mm -hmm. You have a family of Fanda Beatties out there. Yeah, they're a new family. And you have a family of Lee Putins. Yeah. And how long have you got those, and how are they going for you, and going for other people? The Bruisers, as I said, have had mainly as the, the base family from 89 when it started up mm -hmm. here in Belfast. In 1998, a fellow called Keith God, who was Polly with Harry Clinton, he used to be in the papers, uh, used to, and still does, actually started back the Dark Destroyer. Phenomenal fancier, and a great racer when he was at it years ago, but he had a pair of pigeons called, about a, a one particular cat called uh, Golden Eye, and he was on loan with Alan Dara uh, at the time when I got his father from Harry Clinton. When Harry packed in, there was this wonderful checker cock. He was called the steer, which is the bull basically. And he come from the lane of the little black. And I fell in love with this pigeon. Couldn't believe her, the quality of the pigeon. And I got a hen along with it called Eos, who was a sister to, um, I think a pigeon called Woodland Star, who won a car over in England. And the middle it's nice now. I couldn't believe the quality of these pigeons and I rang Keith God and I gave him the ring number. He says, do you know what you have? I says, I know what I have is a good pigeon, but I don't know any more about it than that. Yes. And he says, that's the father of Golden Eye. Golden Eye was a late bred cock of mine. And uh, he purred till Stray as a late bred. He raced his brother and lost him, but he kept his late bred. Uh, didn't bother racing him. And he purred till Stray and he gave the two eggs to a young lad. He was starting up on both of those wins. So he thought, God, I'm going to do something good here. Yeah. So we purred it till a dark hen, dark 14, he called her. And that purr, their next 10 eggs were nine winners. So we had uh, uh, 12 eggs, it was 11 firsts. And this pigeon was on loan with Alan Dara. And I said, hey, would you sell him? He says, I'll not sell him until you look at him. I says, I don't need to look at him, I want to buy him. He says, no, go and look at him. Look at him and look at the hand they're on loan with Alan Dara. He says, and the deal was Alan gets a pair, Noel Higginson gets a pair, and I think it was Avon Mullen or Davey Mullen got a pair. After that, the pair was, was mine. Yes, yes. So I went up to look at them with Paddy Todd, who to me is the greatest volunteer I ever met in this town. But, but the man done with pigeons and small kits of pigeons was unbelievable. But anyway, come back to Alan Dara, myself and Paddy went up, and Alan has all these wee lofts set out in the garden, wee small lofts for teams of pigeons. And when we were, he says, go on down the garden, he was getting his boots on and a pair of dark pigeons flew out into the avery. And I said to Paddy, I don't know what we're here for, but I'm leaving with that pair of pigeons. And I didn't know if there were Alan's or there Keith yes. but I said, I'm leaving with that pair of pigeons. And Alan came up the garden and he said, oh, you found them? And he says, no, that's the first pair come out of the avery. He says, well, that's them. And in fairness to Alan Dara, a decent fella, they were on a pair of young ones at the time. And when they're ready, he says, you take the eggs, or you take the hen, the cock, and the youngs. And I lifted them out of his loft and brought them back to my own place. and put them in the loft in my own place, and the first thing they done was started feeding the youngs. And I thought, that's a smart pair of pigeons. I ended up taking 23 different first prize winners out of that cock. Some of those pigeons had six and seven firsts. So that was the golden eye and the steer and the lane they come from. So that's the buzzard lane. Mm -hmm. As I said, in 1998, Keith God got on to me and he says, I've just seen a couple of fanciers in Doncaster and I've never seen Pigeons like it. Do yourself a favour and get yourself a few of these. And I phoned up Roy Wright and Malcolm Wright and I asked for a kit of young ones, a kit of 10 young ones. And they charged me £40 each for them. And in that kit of young ones, they were all the puddings and that's where Malcolm came from. The first pigeon that ever won the Fed outright three times. And he has a fourth Fed. A seventh fed, I think an, an eighth or an eighth and an eleventh fed. And he was retired at three years of age. And he, in my estimation, he's the best pigeon ever flew in the Ulster Fed. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter, just before we we'll move outside to have a look at the, your setup, uh, 
What do you see for the future? Are you going to concentrate on racing? Are you going to concentrate? I see all the race pigeons are out here, yeah. hopefully, and, and especially if Joby has his way, my young lad. Um, ideally, what I want to be working with next year is about no more than about forty periscope pigeons, because I can cope with that comfortably and cope with the racing on top of that. But when you're, I mean, in the last, this is the first year in the last ten years I have finished breeding before the racing, and the last. Last year I put out 340 youngins here. The year before was 300. The year before that was 300. This year a lot of hard I just decided no, we capped it off at about 110 youngins and that was yes. it. A few went out to sales and a few the other fans here, but basically we just bred for ourselves and this you, year. You, you always get very well the charities. I mean, I remember being at a, a charity action. You put a pair of pigeons up and you give a guarantee yeah. that, that it would be, that yeah. the Breed winners for the people that bought it, and if that pair didn't, that you would refund the money. That's correct. Yeah. So you, you always get very. If it's my own pigeons and I know the lanes, especially the butcher pigeons, and if I know the lanes and where they're coming from, I don't mind sticking my neck out. I'm only going to look silly. The person that bought them's not going to look silly, but I don't think it looks silly because if I put out the pigeons and I'm prepared to put a guarantee on them, all I can tell you is. If there's winning in them, I'll get it out of them. If the fans here can't get it out of them, certainly I'll give them his money back, but I'll keep that pair of pins. Yeah. If they're from my lanes and, and they're from my family, I know what I can do with them. Yes. So, you know, this year, as you've seen there, we're trying something a bit different. My young lad's in with me now as a partner, and of course he wants to do it in his own way, so I brought in these Van Bees Right. From Wright Brothers. Phenomenal fans here, and they've always treated me like Practically, it was their son. Yes. And Roy's on the phone regular. He's the most honest people I've ever met. I'm sure. I wouldn't even ask I'm him. Sure, Roy right appreciate bro. that. You're about seven. He treats as your son. <laughs> well, he says, <laughs> Arty, when I'm on the phone, you would say to me, our kid. <laughs> well, our kid's about freaking 60, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but no, the boy was looked after me. We went over to see them last year in Doncaster and spent the weekend there. And they, Roy's been over here. Molly's been. So we're good friends and we have been for a long time, but they've been wiping the boards with this Van der Beely family at the Nationals. They were always known as sprint men and they wanted to go and do a bit of distance flying. So they brought in these um, Minderhout Van der Beelys. And from day one, they touched with them. They won three Nationals in five years. They won all the rec well, broke all the records. They've been in five years, take every position in the first 20 of the National bar second and 18th. So we started getting these vulnerabilities in and as usual they looked after me, as I said, like of their own. Yes. I've just shown you sixteen cocks out there, they're all off national winners, our brothers in national winners, and you're not get any better. They're perfect proven pigeons. Yes. And it's up to Peter Martin to do my right brothers. The best do, yes, I can talk about other people not doing with mine. So now I have to do it with right brothers' pigeons and they deserve it because they're good pigeon men and good pigeons and the winning is in them. Well, Peter, last thing before we move outside, and this is probably the hardest question that you ask any pigeon man because nobody wants to appear that they're boasting about what they've done or what they've won or anything else. Right. But what have you achieved in your in your time with the pigeons? What have you won? Um. Well, we're all on, uh, I'll give you a few you examples. Spoke, you spoke about Malcolm Mer. Well, Malcolm was the first, first pigeon ever to win the Fed outbreak three times. I mean, the, the Fed started in, I think it was 1898 or something. At the time he won it, I think the Fed was 103 years old. Right. He was the first pigeon to do it. As I said, I believe he's the best pigeon ever to race in the Fed. Yes. I'm the first person in our club in all his history to take the first six. And I'm not talking about with ETS, I'm talking about with Manuel Clapping on the T3. And the day that that happened, there was a team of boys up here from Dublin and they couldn't believe the way the pins were flying here. And I had 11 of, of a drop and I clocked six and they were shouting, clock the rest, clock the rest, clock the rest. And I did and I said, no, it's not fair. It's it six. six, I always clock six. I took the first six in the club that day. I thought I took the rest. And, but um, I had a cock called Seamus. Lost him as a young bird in a, in a bad, I think it was a casual. Young girl reported him and Johnny Porter me went out to lift him and Johnny says to me on the way back, Well, we know what you do, no mercy, because my yeah. loss is no mercy, no mercy loss, loss, fire guy. And he says, We know what you'll do with that. I says, That's the home to get a rest, because it flew itself out and it didn't make a mistake. It's, yeah. There was thousands of pigeons didn't go home that day. And he says, Well, I reckon you'll just be bringing that home and putting it in the bin. 
And I didn't. I put it in that garage and it took me about three months to get him rigged. And when he came rigged, I started racing him on Widowhood next year. And he was a yearling. He flew every race down to Skibbereen, he just came home, nothing, nothing special, maybe fifth or sixth pigeon, just, just, home. It, just home. And I said, well, after all the work I put in, you, you need to repay me. Uh-huh. He got on the channel and he run a muck. He was in the money, the first Tilbany, the second Tilbany, Ocamp, Bude. And I thought, well, there's a yearling cock has had ten races in the last four weeks he's been in the money. Do you have the balls to send him on in the 11th mm-hmm. race in 11 weeks as a yearling? And I thought, well, you just got better up in every week, so I sent yes. him. And it was one of the toughest lamb balls that had in years. There was only four pigeons on the day, and four pigeons came in together. And God rest them, Ken Ross got him teamed, I think a mother and son, to be first and second. And I think, is it, uh, Mr. Redfern down there in the south was third, and I was fourth, and there was only four pigeons on the day. And as I said, that was 11 races in 11 weeks as a year. Well, I thought, the next year's a two-year-old and want to do the same thing. So I brought him out, and as I told you, he'd done nothing up Ireland the year before. And I brought him out. He won the first race. He was second in the next race. He won the next race. I think he was third in the fourth race. And the fifth race, I don't know, was he second or third? And I just it's thought, just no, nah, every week. you're too good to throw away or take chances with. And I retired him. That was Seamus. Mm-hmm. And Seamus produced real good pigeons distance pigeons that liked it on the nose. I gave a half brother to him to Colin Long. Colin asked me what it was like to time out of France when I said I'm a sprint man but I never had a feeling like it, I'll never forget uh-huh. it. And he says I'd love to see what it's like. And I gave him a pair of pigeons and it was a half brother to see him and he says you take a young enough that and you flog it on as a yearling and you tame out of the lamb ball. Mm-hmm. He ended up he beat me. He was third lamb ball, third open lamb ball cool. as a yearling with it. So things like that, I get a wee kicker to be able to produce something or tell someone this is going to win for you. I, 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 and and, and I turn around and win because you do, you're sticking, you're sticking your neck out in the lane and, and you're trying to you're trying to prove to yourself more than anything. Do you know what you're talking about? Mm-hmm. So as I said, things like that. I mean, uh, ten first and nine seconds one year in the club. You know that had never been done. Um, I think. I took it back one time, I sat and Paddy Tabble off about this to this day. There was a young lad in the club and he said to me, uh, I'm going to have you this year. He says, you not beat me once this year. Mm-hmm. Because you do, I'll give you 50 quid if you get in front of me once. It was more banter yes. than fact. Yes. And every week I beat him until the very last race of Skibbery. He was first and I was second. So it cost me a big question. But things like I enjoy, I mean, I don't think there's much left in the club that I haven't done. Yes. I know it may have been a year or two ago, but if I hadn't up and took the first six now, it would never give me the same buzz that I got the first six doing it manually. Yes, yes. Uh, and it's easy to, if you have a team going, it's brilliant with ETS now that you're getting the recognition of a team yeah. coming together, whereas you're not turning them into freaky pigeons where you're afraid you're going to lift them or they run away from you. Or, I mean, I remember I paid Kaka had a son of Malcolm. He came to win more races than us, but he just sat in there and even looked at you. And he knew he was getting lifted. With ETS, that wouldn't have happened to that pigeon. Yeah. He would have been there to win them races. So, you know, I like pushing myself. I like sticking my neck out. I love other people winning with them. And I detest people that win with them that won't tell you. Well, that, and there that, are that's not as right. many that don't tell you as do tell you. I enjoy the fact that I've put out a lot of good pigeons to boys and, and they're doing well with them. And they do ring you up and say, get in with that wee cock or get in with that wee hen and that's off that pair you give me. Because if you're in the breeding, you just don't want to breed winners for yourself. It's, it gets boring. It's a nice thing to do, just mm-hmm. give people a wee bit of recognition. Yeah, so yeah. It's, 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 it's a proper thing to do. Yeah. Well, Peter, maybe we could go out saying that. You, you, know, well, you, you still have the likes of Malcolm and all of that. Malcolm's there. there. Okay, okay, there's, 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 there's a couple of old boys there that'll never go. Um, but yeah, Malcolm, Malcolm's here until he goes or I go. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, but yeah. he's not doing too bad. Well, fair play him. We'll move out say nice so we'll oh. eat.
is uh, a blue cock. He's called Broken Legs. Tried racing him as a young bird in the train and he broke one leg. He took a couple of weeks, put him in a splint and put him back on the road. And his first thought he got back and broke the other leg. So I stopped him. He's actually part uh, Richard and Bran Hogg from their cock white nose. And the mother is what I call, and Richard will love this, the good budgered hen, because that is the mother. So this cock here is the father of the pigeon that was bought by Morris Wilkinson. And Morris ended up winning the National Flag Club averages, and he tells me, or he told me, God rest him, that uh, that hen was responsible for 60% of all the positions that he got that year because the hen was tamed in the Penzance National, the King's Cup in the money, and our young birds were tamed in the young bird nationals to win them the National Flag Club averages. So, half hog, half martin. Talked about the old red rum lanes, and this is right back in the, the real really splice. This cock was given actually as uh, an egg to yeah, my old friend Joe Beck, one of the founder members of the NAPA. But Joe's up in about 86 or 87 years of age now, and he gave me back this cock in case something happened to him. But this cock had won five first from first section, a lot of open positions, and his father also had four firsts. And his father had three firsts and go right back to the yard comes old pigeon bingo. And the old bingo hen had six firsts again all the way to good men. So that's the lane of the old red rum pigeons. Still here. And he's a he's an old six pigeon. And this boy here has always been stuck. He go right back to the golden eye pigeons. And I've heard my best golden eye hen till her son to produce this. He's a grandson of golden eye. I don't know how good your camera is for eyes but they're not many better than that. I don't know if you can get into that Michael. This Michael is the new family I was telling you about. He's one of the pigeons. Minderhood one of the through Wright Brothers and Doncaster. As you can see, they're all basically peas in a pod, but these are off all their best pigeons from uh, their national winners. These are brothers, the national winners, or sons of national winners, of all their best pigeons. Um, they're mostly blues, and he has a lane of the turbo pigeons through him, which throw a light check on them as well. So the turbo pigeons will bring you about another 60, 70 miles further. So these are great pigeons out to 350, uh, and on out to 400 with a check through them. But these are what we're going to work on next year, and we're hoping to get a team of these to fly national races. So you can see they're, they're all basically peas in a pod there, and they do carry a lot of pencil through them as well. I'm not going to grab too much at them, Yep. Certainly a jumpier pigeon than my own buzzards. Again, Michael, at the back of the old buzzard hands here, the old lanes, you can see all the dark ones through them. We talked about uh, the old blackjack pigeons, the 18 and 19, where he threw two of the same sex regularly. This is one from them, this is uh, bred by Eamon Wright. When I had the cancer, Eamon took my stock pigeons up one year and bred a team off them. And this pigeon win for Eamon, but he sent her on down at the end of the year. And her nest mate is Blue Petra. And I say a great pigeon for him, four times in the first hundred and it'd be four weeks running. But again, right back to the old butchers again. That lane there would take me back to 1995 when I got Blackjack, because he's a uh, great grandfather of that pigeon.
there's any red rum men left out there, this is an actual, believe it or not, great granddaughter of red rum. Her father has uh, two first and two uh, two first clubs and two second feds out of Arkle, the sweet pigeon. I gave the father the uh, club mate Raymond Healy. I was supposed to get a couple of young ones of it, but I'm still waiting on them. But uh, these are from that pair, and that's a great hen. Her young ones have flown well on the channel. But again, the old typical old dark buzzard pigeons with that nice bright yellow race now. This is another hen bred by Eamon Reid. Still has her Unicorn ETS from uh, 2008. That hen went from as a young bird is also an S mate to one of his good winners from a Jeff Rat cock that our Tom bought and the old 19 hen again from Blackjack. There's a good pigeon that has bred some decent channel pigeons. Megan, these are the old hens and bulk hens. Get to the stage now. Some of these we have bred ourselves, some of them are direct from Brake Brothers. But a fantastic line of pigeons. Great eye pigeons. Super eye pigeons. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This hen from Ray Brothers, one of their good stock hens, uh, 18160. I'm sure if Roy ever sees this, he recognises this pigeon, but this has been a fantastic producer for them and me. Be the blue with the odd white flight through them, but again, these all go back to direct to Louis Von Lean Putten, and this is a family that he raised very successfully for 30 years, and Ray Brothers have carried on winning with him for the last 40 years, and hopefully, we do the same. But a great team of pigeons, fantastic sprint pigeons. Uh, a lot of people will tell you they only fly to 150. No later than last weekend, we got in our club, Jim Campbell, team won second club out of Penzance in a tough race. And Raymond Russell had a fantastic pigeon uh, winning the club by 38 yards a minute in a tough Penzance race last week. So get them right, 150 means nothing. These pigeons will fly the channel if you get them right. Again, a wee paid from Ray Brothers. This is from uh, what they call the Golden Pair. Anyone that knows Jaggy Magger Lane's line of pigeons will know these because this is the sister to Jaggy's main pigeons. They're from a blue cock and a blue hen that Roy got over in Belgium. And from the minute he got them, the first two, when he paired these two blues together, the first two of them had 15 first between them. Uh, practically everything he's ever raced off them has won the club or win the fed. Jagger Lane has taken them over here and done the same thing with them. Uh, now we have a few of them about us, we're hoping to carry on. Again, great eyed pigeons with super sprint pigeons, but only up to about 200. These won't compete uh, any really any further than that, but phenomenal pigeons up to 200. And hello, I'm swearing to put back in pigeons, as you've probably seen, there's a load of late breads in there. But when Roy sends them, you can't turn them down. But you will not get these type of pigeons again. Some of his older stock pigeons are getting finished now, so I'm taking what I can get and making use of them. These, as you can see, old leaf cutting cocks, a lot of heavy wattle pigeons. People mistake these for the old buzzard pigeons quite a lot because of the heavy wattle in the darks. These are all Louis Van Lien puttons. Um, these are Red Brothers main stock pigeons, the pigeons that have carried them for years. There's a blue cock up in the corner, I don't know if you can see them, Michael. 
I'll catch him in a minute for you. But that cock is first fed, first fed, second fed, fourth fed. Blue paid cock over here is the father of a couple of winners for round four. Uh, Jagger cock, where is he? Him on the floor. Uh, he's been for, he's been winning for a couple of different concerts. Uh, Paddy, oh, I don't want to say no, it's not Paddy Brown. Paddy, former Kings Cup winner down in Osborne, won the South down fed with a young winner in the charity field from that top there. But again, practically every pigeon in here has bred club winners at at least, but mostly fed winners. Are if they haven't done it, they're all winners themselves. Um, I'll let you see Malcolm here. My estimation, the best pigeon ever to fly in the Ulster Federation, bar none. First fed, first fed, first fed, fourth fed, seventh fed, ninth fed, and eleventh fed. This cock was retired at three years old. Bought from Ray Brothers. In 1988 for 40 pounds along with uh, nine other boards. Best money I ever spent because it got me in the door with eight brothers and I've never looked back since. This is an old cock, 17 years of age. Like good pigeons carry on and never get sick. This pigeon's never had a bad day. I said that's Malcolm. His grandchildren have won the fed. Unfortunately, like a stupid asshole, I made the mistake of trying to race every cock off him. I found out too late that the cocks were producing winners. So I have only one son left of him here who has bred well, but this old boy's here, like the sound, until he dies. Good quality pigeons, you don't have to make up stories about them or what they've done or invent stuff. This cock here, I think Roy and Molly call him Big Blue the second. This cock has first fed, first fed, second fed, and fourth fed, amongst other things. A phenomenal cock, tame as a robin, and beautiful looking. Uh, one young bird from him, I sold him a club mate. A couple of young birds and two young birds and gift them one. He always liked mealy pigeons. I give him a mealy paid hen and a young bird from this. And those two young birds win. Uh, one of them was win the club out of Kilbenny, and the other one win the comeback race on the same day a couple of years ago for a club mate of ours, Christopher Carson and his father. Old cock. If you ever see this, Roy, this will make you smile. This is the 838 Wright Brothers number one stock cock. This pigeon has turned out winners from the day and hour he was bred. He's actually a Vanda Bailey cross with a lean button. He is thrown to the lean button colour, he's thrown to the lean button eyes with a Vanda Bailey is in him, his mother is a lovely Vanda Bailey pigeon, but this cock here has produced all sorts of winners. Getting on a bit now, he's 04, but he was bulled last year and I took 12 of them. And he was on the bull this year and I took 6 of them, but give him a bit of a break. Even though he's an 04, I do let him rear his own young ones now and again because I think it keeps their whole insides right by having to work hard. Yeah. Blue cock here, and as you can see, no rings. Him and his nest mate came together unrung intentionally from Roy because he wanted me to have something off that golden couple, so he sent me these two brothers with no rings. Now, we're only really starting to use them next year because, in all honesty, they sat for two years doing nothing because I just couldn't cope with the amount of work. 
that we had, but these pigs will be used from here on in because I now have sisters of them as well, and he's told me what way to cross them and what pigeons to cross them to. So no better man than the master to tell you. So I listen to his words, and this is what we do with these pigs: is breed them the way he tells us to. Very strong, very wriggly, don't like being handled, and very nervous. But by Jesus, they can fly. I laugh about this shot quite regular, myself and my wee mate Paul McKernan. I brought this pigeon to Dublin as a young bird to try and sell him. And I couldn't get an offer for more than 30 euros on him. And I wouldn't let him go for that kind of money because I know what way he was bred. He's a grand son of Malcolm. But I took him home and he bred two winners. So somebody's lost my game. I said that pigeon, I, I pleaded with people to buy him. I told them you'll never look past this pigeon, and nobody wanted him. I think because he was big white flight in the tail, which I hate, but I don't know what put people off him. But back home, straight in, two winners. Peter, thank you very much for coming back home. You're yeah. very welcome. I hope everybody's enjoyed it as much as I've been here. It's been great for me. I've picked up a lot of tips and what have you. And this is really some great saddle. Till the next time. My pleasure, Michael. And I hope there is a next time. Thank you.